we need to talk about Pluto and Charon. Because something is wrong. Imagine that the evaluation of these two cosmic bodies may have made a serious mistake. This mistake could turn our entire understanding of the solar system upside down. In 2006, Pluto, once the celebrated ninth planet of our solar system, was downgraded to a dwarf planet. But what if this decision was wrong? What if Pluto and its largest moon, Charon, actually represent something much larger and more complex than previously thought? Science is a world full of discoveries and great achievements, but sometimes even experts have to admit that they can be wrong. The story of Pluto and Charon could be one such case. Could it even be that we are witnessing a significant error in astronomical classification? This error could lead not only to the revision of Pluto's downgrading, but to a complete reassessment of the solar system. Pluto was a surprise and a celebrated celestial body in 1930. The astronomers who claimed that there must be another planet behind Uranus were finally proved right. As a tiny planet, Pluto has always been the outsider of the planetary ensemble in our solar system, but it was and is actually a real planet. Pluto is not alone. It is accompanied by Charon, its largest moon, which was only discovered in 1978. Charon is unique, not only because of its size in relation to Pluto, but also because of its remarkable properties, which clearly distinguish it from other moons. The relationship between Pluto and Charon is truly unusual. These two form a system in which both bodies orbit around a common center of gravity that lies outside Pluto. Normally, a moon orbits around a common center of gravity that lies within the planet. This unusual constellation has aroused suspicions that could be confirmed these days. Then we will have a small astronomical revolution to celebrate, and possibly soon 10 or even more planets in the solar system. New research results now confirmed. Can you imagine a planet-moon pairing where the moon is almost as big as the planet and has almost the same rights? Unlike typical planet-moon systems, where the moon orbits the planet, Pluto and Charon appear to dance with each other rather than one dominating the other. This unusual symbiosis now raises entirely new questions that go far beyond the traditional classification of planets and moons. The current observations could also shed new light on other moons in the solar system. The exciting question arises as to whether some of the known moons are not really moons at all, but small planets. This consideration now opens up far more than a new astronomical debate. It shakes up fundamental definitions and classifications and could change our view of the formation of the solar system forever. Who would have thought that not only Pluto is a real planet, but also Charon? Yes, you heard right. The strange constellation of the two may now have been recognized for what it really is for the first time. Pluto and Charon are very likely a double planetary system. This now opens up completely new horizons in astronomy and raises exciting questions about the correct or incorrect classification of many other celestial bodies in the solar system. Were we possibly completely wrong with our views and theories about moons in the solar system? The current debate is no longer limited to Pluto and Charon, but also extends to other celestial bodies and possible double planets. Recent research on Pluto and Charon has shed a whole new light on the complexity of their relationship. We have the New Horizons probe to thank for almost all of this brand new data, which reached Pluto in 2015. Then, Hubble took another look at the dwarf planet and its moon. The fantastic and unbelievable thing about Pluto research is that we had practically no sharp image of Pluto until New Horizons arrived. We also lacked real impressions of Charon, but now everything is different and we have these images. We can see the colorful world of Pluto and the jagged but no less exciting Charon in razor-sharp detail. The two celestial bodies could probably not be more different, yet they are bound together in an eternal dance and as a duo are a magnificent sight. Scientists explored the unique dynamics of this system down to the last detail through New Horizons data and found so many peculiarities that the discoveries could now undo all the thinking of 2006. At that time, Pluto was officially stripped of its planetary status by a meeting of the International Astronomical Community. The brand new findings from the New Horizons mission have shown that despite their different surfaces, Pluto and Charon 
share a variety of geological and atmospheric features, suggesting a deeper, possibly symbiotic relationship. Since these groundbreaking new findings, astronomers are taking a fresh look at other binary objects such as Eris and Dysnomia, or Haumea and its moons. They want to know whether these pairs have similar properties to the Pluto-Charon system and what greater truth might lie behind this phenomenon. Analyzing their orbits, mass ratios, and mutual gravitational influences could reveal that binary dwarf planets may be more common than previously thought. What does this mean for astronomy? It sounds exciting because a possible reclassification of Pluto and Charon as a binary planet system could change our view of the solar system forever. A reassessment would not only completely redefine the criteria for planetary classification, but could also provide new facts about the formation and evolution of planets and planetary systems. Our own Earth's moon is also currently being reassessed. Could it be that we are not dealing with a moon or what we thought was a moon? For a long time, researchers assumed that the moon was formed as a kind of fragment of the Earth, probably triggered by a collision with another planet at the very beginning of our solar system. A part of the still very young Earth was separated, and this part is said to have developed into our familiar moon in the Earth's orbit. But what if we were wrong here too, and our moon was a small planet from the beginning, which is just much lighter than the larger planets and was therefore bound to the Earth's orbit? Here, we could be facing a reassessment of the class of moons. These discoveries and the debate that has flared up prove that we are far from knowing everything about our solar system and that we can always expect groundbreaking surprises. The Birth of Planets and Moons in the Protoplanetary Disk The history of our solar system began with a cloud of dust and gas. Set in motion, this cloud began to oscillate more and more violently and to condense in the center. A star was born, but it did not need all the material that was available. Some dust and gas remained, enough to form gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn and many smaller, rocky objects. Thanks to advanced computer simulations and observations elsewhere in the universe, we now know quite precisely how cosmic bodies emerged from the depths of space. The history of the solar system is initially a story of chaos, collisions, and incredible forces. Only after a few million or a billion years did the order we know finally return. Even when our planets were still loose swirls of gas and dust within the protoplanetary disk, there were mergers and collisions. The basic elements of the moons probably formed in parallel with the planets. However, the birth histories of these celestial bodies are not quite as clear as those of the large planets. One theory is that moons are captured from the surrounding space. This theory could explain the existence of some irregular moons of gas giants, but seems less plausible for larger moons such as the Earth's moon. A theory of co-accretion explains that moons form simultaneously with their planet from the same surrounding matter, which could be true for smaller moons near their planet. Perhaps the most intriguing theory is the giant impact hypothesis, which we have already highlighted. It states that the Earth's moon, at least, is the result of a gigantic collision between the early Earth and a Mars-sized body. In the outer regions of the solar system, such as the Kuiper Belt, we find a large number of misshapen objects that are neither quite moons nor planets. These objects could grow into rounder shapes even today by gaining mass, possibly through collisions or the capture of material. The round shape comes about when a certain amount of mass is reached and the body rotates in a very specific way. These processes are far from fully understood and remain an exciting field of astronomy. What is a planet and what is a moon? Who of you is not familiar with this distinction? A planet revolves around the sun in a similar and comprehensible orbit. Moons, on the other hand, do not orbit the sun independently, but as companions of planets. The discussion about the definition of planets was fueled in the years before 2006 by the discovery of many smaller, trans-Neptunian objects. At that time, the mini planets Eris, Makimaki, Haumea, and many others appeared. All of these objects are in orbits that are predominantly behind the orbit of Neptune. This raised the question of whether Pluto really is a planet or whether it is one of the trans-Neptunian objects. Both are certainly true. Eris, which is almost as big as Pluto, caused particular confusion. According to the old rules, it should have also been included in the ranks of the large planets in the solar system, but doubts arose among some astronomers. 
What if we discover many more of these tiny objects? The Kuiper Belt has already been explored to this day, and there may be dozens of other dwarf planets there. Nobody wanted 20 or 30 planets in the system. So, a boundary was drawn, and what many people still cannot understand today, Pluto ended up beyond the boundary of a real planet and has been a dwarf planet or a trans-Neptunian object ever since. This declassification has caused a lack of understanding even among the normal population and hundreds, if not thousands, of letters of protest have been received by NASA, major research institutions, and well-known astronomers. The International Astronomical Union defined a planet as a body that orbits the Sun, has a nearly round shape, and has cleared its orbit of other objects. While Pluto fulfills the first two criteria, it fails the third. Pluto shares its orbital space with other objects in the Kuiper Belt. However, the point that a planet must have cleared its orbit is controversial, as this is difficult to determine for objects in the densely populated asteroid belt or in the Kuiper Belt. The debate surrounding Pluto continues to this day, and the fact that we may be dealing with a fascinating double planet could now overturn the previously unrevised decisions. Subscribe to the channel and be part of many more exciting videos.